Hey, Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you outfielders about four tips to get a better jump. Obviously, the better jump that you get, meaning your, your first step, your jump on the baseball, the more ground that you're gonna be able to cover, you're really gonna make yourself stand out as an elite outfielder. So I've got some tips for you to improve that jump. I've also got a quick drill to help you as well. So let's just jump straight into it. All right, the very first tip that I have for you on how to improve your jump is work on your drop step. What I mean by your drop step is your very first step. So let's say I get into my ready position, boom, balls hit over my head. My drop step is that very first step that I take. And a lot of players have false steps. So I wanna compare it to a 60 yard dash, right? Your 60 yard dash, the difference between running a seven second 60 yard dash and a six eight, which is obviously a huge difference in the mind of coaches and scouts, the biggest difference between that is your first step. So what I mean by that is a 60 yard dash. If your first step is this, boom, and I'm not covering any ground and I'm taking up a 10th of a second or two, then that's gonna be a seven. However, if I open up this front foot and I drive off this backside and my first step is a crossover move where I cover three feet, then that's a six eight. So your first step is so important when you're doing the 60 yard dash and it's also so important when it comes to covering ground in the outfield. So a great drill that I like to do, I like to call it no false steps. You're gonna just put a baseball bat on the ground. This is a drill that's gonna help you with immediate feedback. You're gonna know, hey, did I do a false step or not, right? We're gonna work on balls hit over our head to our left, over our head to our right, and then over our head, straight over our head, and we're also gonna work the left side and the right side. But the way this drill is gonna work, bat on the ground, I'm gonna start with my toes pretty much on the baseball bat like this. And it's great to have a coach a few feet in front of you who can point you know, one way or the other way. If you don't have a coach, you, know, you just gotta make it up in your head. I'm gonna go left this time, whatever. But the biggest thing that I want you to do, get into your ready position, is I want you to over-exaggerate, boom, the drop step. And you'll notice that I can take a false step. When I'm going back to my left, my left foot is the first foot that moves. My right foot did not kick forward like this because I see a lot of players do this. Their first move is right and then drop step. That's a false step. Same as we were just talking about that 60 yard dash. So the bat's on the ground for that immediate feedback. So I'm ready to go like this. And if I do it properly, the bat doesn't move at all. However, if I do the false step, the bat's gonna move, okay? <clears throat> Now it's important to over-exaggerate this. Obviously in a game, is your drop step gonna be this big? Probably not. You're probably not gonna open your hips up that much. However, if you over-exaggerate it in practice, then in a game, instead of doing this as your first step, you might be able to get a more reasonable first step like this. That's gonna help you with your jump. So try the no false steps drill. Again, left, right, straight over our head, left, right. All right, so now that you've got that drill down, let's work on something else. Guys, you have to practice your jumps in batting practice if you wanna be good at it in a game. Now, depending on your age and depending on your team, you may or may not take on-field batting practice, but when you do, I assume you occasionally do at least, it's important to go to your position in the outfield and work on getting good jumps on the baseball. Too many times, I mean, I've done it, every single player has done it at some point in their career, and I'm sure that you can relate to this, but how often are you sitting in the outfield like this as somebody's hitting, and it's kind of boring, you know, you're talking to your buddy, oh, what are you doing this weekend, man? We got Sunday off, you got any big plans? And a ball goes up, and you think, oh, I'm not gonna get that. Wait, is Tony gonna get that? Nope, I better go get it. And then you take off. That's not working on your jumps. That's, that's shagging, that's not getting any better. What you should do in out or in batting practice is I know it's going to be tedious I know it's not the most fun thing but you need to be getting into a ready position in every single pitch 
take your pre-step read, get into your good solid defensive position, and then a ball sit over your head, work on, boom, no false steps, go get there, go make that play. A ground ball, boom, come in on it and work on your ground ball, work on fielding the ball on different surfaces. If it's over your left, same way. One quick way to make this a little bit more fun is to make it a game with you and your friends. So have a right fielder, a center fielder, a left fielder, and make it a game, uh, you know, certain point values. So, um, you know, let's say that the ball's hit up into the air and it's in the left center gap. Whoever can get there, whoever can make the catch gets three points or five points or a point, whatever it is, and you're trying to see how many baseballs that you can get to. That's gonna spice things up a little bit. So gamify it, but I know it can get tedious, but that's the way that you work on it. You can't be just you know sitting there in the outfield and then expect to come into a game and have incredible jumps and get to balls that most you know outfielders wouldn't. If you want results that others can't have, you must be willing to do work that others aren't willing to do. All right, moving on, the next tip I have for you is pay attention to hitters' tendencies. Sometimes if it's a team that you don't know, you're not very familiar with, the first time through the lineup, you know, you're not sure what to expect, right? There's some commonalities across every lineup, right? Usually the leadoff hitter is a speedier guy with a little less power, right? Usually three, four, five hitters have a little bit more power, so you might need to back up a few steps, right? But in terms of, oh, this guy's a dead pull hitter or dead opposite field hitter, Typically, you aren't going to know that at the lower levels until you start going through the lineup. So pay attention. Okay, this is the leadoff hitter, or better yet, we just got the leadoff hitter to roll over to shortstop. So that's what he did. And then second time he comes up, up oh, he rolled over to shortstop again. I'm the center fielder. Looks like he's out ahead of everything. So I'm going to move over just a couple steps. I'm going to shade him just a couple steps this way because that's his tendency. Or you know, are you going to play the three, four, five hitters? Let's say you're playing them deep. Are you going to play them the same depth as if, you know, the leadoff hitter's up, he's a little bit speedier guy, and all he does is punch his little singles uh, right up the middle, but he has no chance of beating you over your head. Are you going to play in that same depth? or are you gonna make an adjustment and move closer to the plate? So it's all about making adjustments. A lot of the times in the big leagues, you might see a player and you might think, man, he gets such great jumps. And a lot of them do because they've mastered that first step, right? And they've got great you know, uh, hand-eye coordination, that kind of thing. Uh, they can see the ball really well. But what you're missing out on is a lot of the times, you know, they have advanced scouting reports. They know guys' tendencies. And you can learn them too just by paying attention to the hitters and what they consistently do. But a lot of the times, those guys are shading, hey, this guy pulls 80% of the time, we're going to play to that. We're going to play to our strengths. We're going to shift him over. We're going to shade, okay? So just, you know, that's important as you start going up and down through lineups, just learn hitters' tendencies. And before you know it, you know, you're going to be making plays that a lot of outfielders wouldn't make simply because you made an adjustment even before the first pitch. The last tip that I have for you is work on your hip mobility. And this won't just help you in the outfield, it'll help you in every single facet of the game. It'll help you with your throwing velocity and becoming more accurate and staying healthy, being more athletic. So hip mobility is something that a lot of baseball players don't focus on at all. And I think outfielders, especially, you know, when we're working on taking that big first drop step and eliminating false steps, you're not gonna be able to do this movement here unless you have some mobility in your hips. So a great little quick exercise you can do. I wouldn't even call it a drill. It's just something I'd add to your warm-ups every day is doing hurdles or reverse hurdles. You've probably done these before. All you do is act like you're stepping over a hurdle. So if there was a hurdle here, I would step over it with my right foot. If I go too low, that right there is not going to step over the hurdle. So I have to get my leg up and step over the hurdle. Then once I do my right one, I move backwards and I do my left one. So you can start off slow and speed that up. But that little exercise, just this right here, is going to help you with your hip mobility. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I have a Bat Speed Boosters free workout that I want to share with you. All you have to do to grab this free Bat Speed workout, just click on that very first link below this video in the description. That'll take you to a page. I'm just going to need your email address and then I'll grant you access to the Bat Speed Boosters workout. So go ahead and click that link and do that now. Go pick up your free Bat Speed Boosters workout. And as always, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're coming out with new baseball videos every single week. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a thumbs up and last thing, get in the comments section and let me know what you'd like to see in future videos on the channel. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.